Hello, I'm celebrating Holy Communion today from Exeter Cathedral with a member of my own household. And I offer a very warm welcome to all of you participating with us at a distance. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church. And so rule the heart of thy chosen servant Elizabeth, our Queen and Governor, that she, knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honour and glory, and that we and all her subjects, duly considering whose authority she hath, may faithfully serve, honour and humbly obey her, in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The Collect for the second Sunday after the Epiphany. Almighty and everlasting God, who dost govern all things in heaven and earth, Mercifully hear the supplications of thy people, and grant us thy peace all the days of our life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The epistle is written in the twelfth chapter of Paul's epistle to the Romans, beginning at verse 6. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, in honour preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Bless them with pers which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one towards another. 
Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. This is the word of the Lord. The Gospel is written in the second chapter of the Gospel according to John, beginning at the first verse. Glory to you, O Christ. And the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee, and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I'm presiding at this service of Holy Communion from an almost empty Exeter Cathedral. It's a wonderful privilege to be able to celebrate the sacrament in such a beautiful and historic place. But I would much rather be celebrating according to our usual fashion with a larger congregation. The emptiness of this space is for me a reminder of the way in which we are all being asked to make sacrifices, to empty out various aspects of our lives, to restrict our movements and our social interactions in this further period of lockdown. One of the difficulties about these successive lockdowns, of course, is that although we are more or less all subject to the same restrictions, they affect different people in different ways. I acknowledge that some of you participating in this service of Holy Communion will have suffered greatly from the restrictions placed on your lives. These are things far more significant than having to celebrate a communion service in such an empty space. But in this empty space, I am thinking of these greater restrictions and griefs and anxieties in our lives, and I am holding them in my prayers. Our readings today, however, do remind us of our hope. In the account of the wedding at Cana, Jesus, as the Gospel writer tells us, reveals his glory by turning water into wine. The superabundant generosity of the transformation is an important part of the story. Another important element is the public nature of the transformation. Jesus' miracle was not an arbitrary conjuring trick performed to a small audience of disciples to convince them of his divine credentials. 
Rather, he gave a real, tangible and generous gift to a party at a wedding feast. This event points ahead to the real, generous and public gifts promised by God through Jesus Christ. We may feel at the moment that we are in sore need of such generous, tangible and welcome refreshment. Our current collective experience is unusual, perhaps unique, in the way our need for refreshment and relief is felt by so many in the world at the same time. Nevertheless, this waiting is in itself not a sign that hope is gone. Even in Jesus' own lifetime, there were moments where his disciples experienced loss of hope. There were times when they waited and waited. His mother Mary had been waiting 30 years for this beginning of her son's ministry. Even in this story, there is a seeming hesitation as Jesus says to his mother, my hour has not yet come. So in this moment, I have a sense that we are with Mary at that point before the transformation of the wine. We may well feel her impatience too. Perhaps she was thinking, if you are who I believe you to be, why do you not do something? We may feel too that we are in a period not just of waiting, but of labour and preparation. We are perhaps feeling like the servants, laboriously filling up those huge stone water jars and yet not knowing what on earth is going on. But unlike those servants, we have tokens of hope that we can experience here and now, even though they are also pointers to a richer hope yet to come. We have the story of Jesus Christ, we can learn from Mary's faithful impatience and the servant's obedient but puzzled preparation. We have our communities in which God is among us in prayer, in worship, in so many ways, despite the constricted circumstances. There are many reasons why it matters that we have had to change the way we worship. God made us embodied social creatures. And where and how we worship has profound consequences for our embodied social relationships. But there is another sense in which what really matters is that we are continuing to worship however imperfect that might seem. It's not as if we can offer God perfect worship anyway. God always has to step in to heal the imperfections of whatever we do in his name. So the fact that across the world, communities with God's grace are resolutely, creatively and joyfully continuing to worship in the faith that God is with us, is for me a huge sign, a huge gift of hope. May we all be blessed with God's generous presence with us today. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. 
who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that you may, they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church, militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors and specially thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed. And grant unto her whole counsel, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and indifferently minister justice, to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue, Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and curates, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and specially to this congregation here present, 
that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word. Truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. Beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever after serve and please thee in newness of life to the honour and glory of thy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God our Heavenly Father who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that travail, and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that might believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what Saint Paul saith. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right and our bounden duty that we should at all times 
and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen.
Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy humble servants entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we being unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits but pardoning our offences, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty. Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and those whom you love and remain with you always. Amen.